Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from Impact Church. Amen. All right. We're going to move on. So the Gospels are pretty powerful. So those who uh, can't accept the, the, the John the Baptist, summarize it like that. No, those who can't accept the doctrine of the baptism of the Holy Spirit don't have a theological problem. They have a grammatical problem, even though it is a theological issue. There's many great deep theologians who think we Pentecostals have, you know, taken, you know, about seven parts of Scripture, and some of them are historical reference to, and only a couple where it actually happened. And we, we just, you know, we surround ourselves with that. We just focus on that so much, and I mean, you know, everything else, we hardly look, we're just looking at that all the time. It's only there a few times, you know, like you make a big deal of it. Well, the scripture makes a big deal of it. John said, I summarized the whole ministry of Jesus with it. So I reckon we should pay attention, right? But let me, let me help you now. You ready to say Frida? Frida? Okay, so Frida pickled the cucumbers in vinegar. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, so what is getting pickled? What are the cucumbers getting pickled in? Who's doing the pickling? Wow, you guys are amazing. You're so incredibly literate. Let's do the same wonderful examination of this. Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Okay, who's getting baptized? Us. What are we getting baptized in? Who's doing the baptizing? Jesus. Jesus. Pretty straight up, isn't it? Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And the word baptize is actually a Greek word. It's a word that, for whatever reason, we decided not to translate that Greek word into an English word. But if we did, if you were at the market back in their day and you came and you wanted some pickles, you would say, hey, have you got any baptized cucumbers? And it was a very common word. It meant something that was saturated in something, put into something, soaked in something until its very nature was changed. And you see, baptized means you got soaked, saturated, pickled, completely transformed in the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptized is such a nice religious word, but it literally means sloppily, messed up, totally transformed, touched, overdone, pickled, mm, in every way. Huh? All right. All right, so let, let's move on. So three baptisms, you ready? Three baptisms. The spirit baptizes the believer in the body of Christ. The disciple baptizes the believer in water. Jesus baptizes the believer in the Holy Spirit. A lot of people say, you guys talking about Jesus baptizing the Holy Spirit, that's the same baptism as the spirit putting you in the body. It's not, because it says the spirit is the baptizer, and he baptizes us and he puts us in the body of Christ. Totally different baptism. That would be free to taking an orange and chopping it up and giving it to everybody. A completely different subject matter. There is a significant, separate, whole baptism that Jesus brought, which was baptizing believers into the Holy Ghost. All four Gospels record the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And all four Gospels, including starting in the book of Acts, record the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When God wants to repeat himself four times, I reckon he wants you to pay attention. Hey, if I had to repeat myself to my kids, if I said, if I got to repeat myself more than once, you're not paying attention. But when you do repeat yourself, it's because you really want to get the fact across. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a big, big deal. Matthew 3.11, indeed, I baptize you with water under repentance, but he, that was John, he said the water baptism, but he said he's coming, he's mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Mark 1.8, indeed, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Luke 3.16, John answered saying, oh, I indeed baptize with water, one mightier than I is coming, whose sandals straps I'm not worthy to loose, he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. John chapter 1.33, I did not know him, but he Send me to him, and I baptize with water. He said to me, unto whom you see the Spirit descending on him remaining, he, this one, that's the one who's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. It's all those Gospels right there. Amen? A little speed reading for you, sped reading. Do you know they say that you can listen 60 times faster than I can talk? So hurry up. Acts chapter 18, 24 to 26, Apollos was an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. Apollos was an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. It means he was a really awesome orator, a great teacher. I love when he teaches. It's so pleasant to listen to him. He's such an amazing speaker, and he just knows the scriptures so well. So this is, again, you'd say, pretty awesome. I'm going to go see his conference, because everybody says he's a real eloquent guy. He's instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. I mean, this is pretty good. Here's my bio. You know, that's a pretty good bio. You'd go hear that guy speak. So Aquila and Priscilla, they go to the conference and they're watching him speak. So they're there. And it says, though he know only the baptism of John and Aquila and Priscilla are there. And when they heard him speak, they took him aside. 
They took aside the eloquent, mighty man in scriptures, instructed in the way, the man fervent in spirit, the man who spoke accurately the things of the Lord. They took him aside and said, hey, dude, awesome sermon. That was pretty great. You got the Holy Ghost? Oh, I just got the baptism of John. What do you mean baptism of the Holy Ghost? They took him aside and they explained to him the way of God more accurately. More accurately. Hello? Big parts of the body of Christ need us to be tongue-talking, fire-breathing Pentecostals. Okay, thank you for that amen. Show you a picture of a book here. It's a book by D.L. Moody's son, Q5S3. Apparently you won the bingo. So. The Life of Dwight L. Moody by His Own Son. I'm going to give you a quote out of that book. I got a bit of it on the screen, but I'm going to read the whole thing from pages 146, 47, 49. Love D.L. Moody. He did my term paper in the church history on D.L. Moody because he's such a neat guy. But D.L. Moody, a successful minister by his own admission, later said that he lacked the power on his ministry. One day, two women came up to him after service. They said, we've been praying for you. And he said, well, why do you pray for me? Why don't you pray for the people? So he saw these ladies pray, and he said, that's great, they're praying for salvation. And this was a guy who'd ministered for years, saw hundreds and hundreds of people converted, went all over the world and taught all kinds of places. And I mean, this is a guy who already had a very, very significant ministry, a blessed life, an incredible guy. But these two ladies are sitting in a meeting, and they're just like, oh. and he goes, beautiful, a couple prayer warriors in the front row. And he said, praying for the folks, are He says, no, we're praying for you. What are you praying for me for? Man, I'm a mighty man of God. He says, he said, he said I, I need the power. Why, said Moody in relating the incident years later. He said, I thought I had power. I have a large, some of the largest congregations in Chicago. He says, and there's many, many conversions. So Moody also said that in a sense, he was satisfied. He was in a comfort zone. But these two women praying for him rocked his boat. They told him that they were praying for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be on D.L. Moody to have special service for God. He could not get this off his mind. He said, there was a great hunger developed in my soul that I did not know what I was and I began to cry out to God as never before. I felt like I did not want to live. I could not, if I did not have more, there must be more. So he got satisfied. He was doing ministry, doing things and carrying on, but he didn't realize, man, I could have. And after this, R.A. Torrey was a teacher who, who began Moody Bible Institute with him. Often he'd say, R.A., teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Teach on the baptism of the of the Holy Spirit. After the great fire in Chicago, D.L. was working when about raising money to rebuild tabernacles and churches there in Chicago. And he said his heart was not into it because he kept on crying, God, I need you, fill me. He withdrew and prayed one time on a visit to New York City to raise money. He cried out to God that God would fill him with the Spirit. And D.L. describes it like this. He said, well, one day in New York City, oh, what a day. I cannot describe it. I seldom refer to it. It's almost too sacred an experience to name. Paul had an experience which he never spoke about for 14 years. I can only say that God revealed himself to me. I had such an experience of his love that I had to ask him, stay your hand, stay your hand, stop. He said, after that, I went again to preaching. He said, the sermons were not different, same sermons. He said, I did not present any new truths, yet hundreds more were converted. I would not now be placed back where I was before the blessed experience. I should give all, if you should give me all the world, it would be like a speck of dust in the balance. And I, I give you so many more stories of, of Finney, of, of even Billy Graham, of, of all kinds of people who've talked about there was something besides when I was born from above. There was something besides being baptized in water. There was an experience that I had that was beyond all of those. There was a baptism in the Spirit of God that I had that revolutionized my life and changed my ministry forever. And I could go over and over with so many people, but I thought DL's was really pretty cool. Acts chapter 19, 1 to 6. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? And when he laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. See, here is Apollos, just a chapter before. Aquila and Priscilla found Apollos and they laid hands on him. He received the Holy Ghost. Then here's Paul. He goes down to Ephesus. He's with some believers. Say believers. Amen. Hanging out with a group of believers. And after a while, hanging out with these, he's like, something ain't quite right here. And he went, you guys, you guys heard about the Holy Ghost? He said, we haven't heard about the Holy Ghost. What do you mean the Holy Ghost? He said, ah, okay. He said, we only know the baptism of John. He said, oh, okay. And he laid his hands on them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Say, but wait, there's more. <laughs> 